welcome to this final clip in our series. And I really do hope that you have been able to put into practice some of the tools and that you are finding yourself becoming more emotionally aware and attuned. Today I'm going to focus on resilience. Resilience is a fantastic tool to learn and to have in your toolbox. Resilience can be defined as the ability to bounce back from negative experiences. If you can help your children learn resilience, it will help them really succeed in life. Resilience comes from facing negatives and hurts and pains and horrible situations like what we're facing now. So I come right back to what I said in the very beginning. How well you are managing this will be how well your children manage this. If you have learned resilience, they will be picking that up from you. So often as parents, we want to do everything in our power to protect our children and make life easy for them. But that does not allow them to learn this tool of resilience. So see this as one of the real benefits of COVID, of helping your children learn how to internalize resilience. As I've said many times, do not underestimate the far-reaching psychosocial effects of this lockdown and virus. Many of us are feeling hugely overwhelmed by the decisions we're needing to make regarding our children and schooling, returning to school, the health risks associated with it. Many families have immune-compromised members in their family or extended family of which they are really aware and wanting to protect. I want you to realize here that when you have weighed up all the pros and cons as a family and made a decision, you might then find you feeling guilty about the decision you've made. I want you to question that guilt because we can have true guilt and we can have false guilt. So let's just unpack that a little bit. True guilt is meant to stop us in our tracks, to realize what we're doing is wrong, to convict us of something that needs to be changed. And then we have false guilt, which will attack us as who we are. You are bad. You are living in fear. You are being selfish in your decision. And if it starts to attack who you are, it's now turned from conviction into condemnation. And we know there is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. You weigh up the pros and cons and you make a decision that you believe is in the greatest good of your family. And here I want us to respect one another's decisions. We don't have to agree. We can choose to disagree because our circumstances and situations are unique. I think there are, we must really learn to not judge others. Sometimes people want their decision to be done by others because it validates that they've made the right decision. So be careful of that. Your situation is unique. It's okay to have differing opinions. It's okay to make different decisions. We just need to respect that in each other. There are 10 tips for parenting during a pandemic that I'm going to go through. A lot of that is summing up what we have talked about in the last three clips. I want you to take time to point out to your children the things that have changed, but the things that have stayed the same. It's always good to look at both sides of the coin, but then focus on the positives. Play, play, play with your children. Children spell love, T-I-M-E. And for children, their language is play. So put your phone away or put it on silent and leave it for a half an hour and get down on the ground and play what they want to play. Connect with them. As teenagers, both lots put your phone away and chat to each other or share a, a, a movie together, do something, go for a walk together. 
allow the child to share as much as they're wanting to share. As I said earlier as well, structure and routine helps calm us down. Validate your child's emotions just by saying, I see you are feeling is acknowledgement of who I am is seen and heard. Help yourself and your children model and reframe their thoughts because our thoughts are not necessarily the truth. Our thoughts can come from ourselves, they can come from the Lord, or they can come from Satan. We have to check our thoughts. If we realize where they're coming from is from our selfishness or from Satan, we need to reframe our thoughts into the truth of God's word. And it's okay to also say, I don't know. Often we feel as parents we have to have all the answers. If one of your children comes home and throws a wobbly and says, I'm sick of this, when is it going to stop? I want to be able to do sport again. I want to be able to play with my friends. You can say, I don't know when it's going to stop. I wish I did know, but I don't know. None of us know. So include yourself in also not knowing. And then again, validate the frustration that you're feeling or that you see your child is feeling. If you're struggling, it's very wise to go and get as somebody that you trust to, that you can offload on, whether that is a close friend or some godly counsel or professional help. Never be too proud to seek help when you are struggling. See yourself as building resilience through this, learning new coping mechanisms, new tools that this too shall pass and I will be better for it. That's a choice you make. Are you going to allow what's happened to make you better or bitter? And where we said, play, 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 I want you to pray, pray, pray. If we can take our eyes off all the obstacles and problems that we are facing, challenges, and take our eyes up to God, we are realigning our focus off the challenges and onto the one who can negotiate the way for us. I want you to take care of yourself. I've said before, be kind to yourself. And I said I'd come back to this. So that is called self-care. Often as a mother, we tend, I think most of the people watching this would possibly be moms, most of us tend to put everybody else's needs above our own. But you need to take some time out for yourself. And that format may look different for each person. You will be a better mother and a better wife if you do give yourself some self-care. We know that there are four ways that most people find to recharge. And what I'm going to say, try and recognize in yourself which is your primary way of recharging. It can change according to your circumstances. And try and see if you can identify what your spouse or your children's way of recharging is. So there is the recharge of physical exercise. Some people really, after a crazy week, need to go for a run or a session in the gym or a cycle or a hike. That is what they need, physical outlet. For others, it's socializing. They might say, let's have a brighter night and invite, well, we're not really allowed to, but we're all doing it, invite some people round because that will help them relax. For other people, it might be completely alone time. I just need a half an hour or an hour completely by myself in silence. If you're a true introvert, you really actually need that to recharge yourself. So put that in. See how you can put that time aside. And people need to respect it. Your children will learn to respect that too if they taught that. And then the final one is what we call blobbing. You don't need to do anything. There's no expectation of you. So it can be in a social setting, it can be alone. That's not the priority. The priority is that you can just relax and be. Maybe order in pizzas that night and chill. Leave the dishes for the next day. That might be what you need. So try and recognize what your recharge is and try and look at your spouse and your children and maybe ask them, I say it's a very helpful tool to think after a really busy week, come Friday evening, what is your go-to wanting to do? 
And as I said, these can change depending on the situation and the circumstances you find yourself in. So it might be very different to what it used to be, but just acknowledge that and then we add that into our life. I trust that you'll be spending time with the Lord because that is where our help lies. That is who we know is in control, especially when everything else feels out of our control. We need to touch base with our maker, our creator, who knows how to calm and relax us and help us to build our faith and our trust in him. And we might be having a Q&A session in some time in, in the future, but if not, you are welcome to contact me at any time if you're struggling with anything that's overwhelming your coping mechanisms. Thank you very much.